<laughs> I've been wanting to get into Canada for long, even if it's just passing through. It's I'm okay. Say, yes, it's okay. I'll worry about customs and my visas later. But for now, at least let's go to Canada. Two hours later. Um, we just escaped deportation from the US. What's up beautiful people? It is your girl Faith and I am back with another video. As you can tell, this is not the typical way my videos look, at least not to the beginning. And yeah, the car that you see is packed and loaded. It is 4.30 a.m. and your girl is moving. I got a job in a different state um, as a lab technician. I'm in a biomedical company and so I am moving um, today so yeah I thought to take you guys um, on this journey with me um, Lano is driving and so yeah I wanted to share with you guys um, what this day is going to be like and the places we're going to see on the way I've never been to this state and so it's going to be an exciting journey I honestly am pretty like anxious about everything um, but you know, I'm just trusting God um, because he's brought me this far and he provided this opportunity for me. And so, yeah, I'm really grateful for this experience and yeah, got to share it with you. So yeah, guys, let us go. Two hours later. Um, we just escaped deportation from the US. Yes. Uh, so, just wait. Let me just explain what happened. Um, so, yeah, we... Okay, so when we had punched in, like, um, our destination on the GPS, it had given us um, a route that allowed us to go through Canada. Um, it was shorter. It was, like, 12 hours. And so... Um, compared to what we had initially known to be a 16 hour drive. So we're like, oh, okay, yeah, let's go through this route. Um, not really knowing that um, it would give us a lot of trouble um, through that route. Um, so initially we had gone through US um, Customs where, well, at least we stopped by and we're told, yeah, um, we think they're going to help you out. Shouldn't be a problem because we explained to them um, our situation. And so we went through to Canada um, and the officers there were so nice, they were so polite, um, and they were very helpful. Um, so we explained to them our predicament, and um, they told us, oh yeah, you know, we have a number of people come through here with the same situation. Um, and they told us that um, because um, I am Zambian, I have a Zambian passport, I would have needed um, to have a visa to get through Canada, even though it was not my destination. And so, yeah that was the situation and so they explained to us that we would have to go through ohio to get to my destination state and so we would have to um put our destination as ohio then from ohio um use my destination my um actual destination and so yeah that was the situation um definitely got to learn a lot more um about you know immigration status and whatnot um that i would possibly explain in a future video um but yeah so the trouble for us came through when um we got back to the u.s border that was where it was hectic it took us it delayed us by a whole two hours um just because like the officers there gave us a really hard time um 
just to prove the fact that we were there legally and explain our situation. Um, it took a lot of prayer because we really didn't know how things were going to turn out. At the time, Lano didn't have his passport on him, um, but he did have his OPT card. And so they were able to verify stuff. And there was a bit of a misunderstanding as to like what I um, where I was going. They had initially thought I was moving for school when in actuality I was moving for work. And so that got cleared up and we were good. But it definitely was a scary situation to be in. Um, but God, as usual, came through for us. It took a lot of like just praying for me personally to maintain my sanity in that moment. Um, but God is faithful. So that was the situation. <laughs> but yeah, guys, on to the journey. Yeah, so we're going to take the longer route. Um, but yeah, guys, we'll still keep you updated on the travel. Come to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point i believe we were in detroit yeah yeah i think this was detroit dance session ain't ever killed nobody at least nobody i know of but the point is it is necessary <laughs> And we are now in Ohio. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I just love a good water body. It's so refreshing for me to see. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. And I enjoyed the few, I guess, hours, minutes-ish we were there. But yeah, it's really pretty. So at this point we stopped for a little Starbucksy box. Um, I got the um, caramel ribbon crunch frappuccino. I really like this one. It's really sweet. Um, I was never actually a Starbucks girl, not caffeine at all. Um, but yeah, I had stopped for my first Starbucks. I think my first Starbucks drink was, it should have been another frappuccino, but I can't remember what it was. Then I got a matcha latte and then yeah, caramel ribbon crunch and I have been dedicated to that one. Um, but I don't really like to take caffeine much because it, I realize it doesn't do me good. Um, I've been taking it though a lot more often because of work. Um, but yeah, not a healthy habit because it leaves me shaking and I think that's a little too much caffeine for my system. Um, but I'm trying to rid of it. Um, but yeah, I understand the hype of Starbucks now. Um, but yeah, we had Chipotle for lunch. I wasn't really a fan of Chipotle before because I don't really like beans. Um, and for the longest time, I think for almost, almost 10 years, no, 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 almost nine years now, actually past nine years now, I have been pescatarian. And so I only recently started eating chicken again this year, um, but like Chipotle didn't have fish. And so I could only have beans if I'm going to eat from Chipotle and I do not like beans, so I did not like it. Um, but because I started um, eating chicken again to increase my protein intake, which I had been lacking, um, yeah i i enjoy chipotle now but yeah so that was our lunch ah you guys <laughs> we've had an experience today so <laughs> how many hours behind are we at this rate <laughs> we've got seven hours and 21 minutes to go in the day. 
It's 5 43 a.m. We said it's not 5 4 a.m. The number of setbacks that we've experienced has been mad today. Like, oh gosh. But anyway, so, um, what just happened? Car rental. So, yesterday we had gone to pick up a car for which we had already made a reservation starting yesterday um, till tomorrow at 9 p.m. I believe. Um, yeah, so we made the reservation with um, Alamo and we went to. Yeah, we went to pick up the car at um, Gerald R. Ford International Airport in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So yeah, we went to pick up the car and we paid like about $291 for the rental. Um, and initially we thought, oh yeah, you know, that's all that's, that would have to pay because the site and the confirmation didn't say anything else. We get there, we're told, first of all, you have to pay via credit card. And we get there, we're told, oh yeah, there's a $400 deposit that you're supposed to like also have on your account um, through the credit card that you use to make the payment in order for you to like uh, pick up the car. Which was something that we were unaware of. Had we known earlier, would have made the appropriate accommodations for that kind of arrangement. So now, we didn't have that much money <coughs> on the same card and they wouldn't have us use a debit card or another credit card so we're stuck so all we had to do was like get a refund and utilize another car rental service which we're able to do after trials and tribulations we did that um, and we decided to use Avis rental service but for them they had a deposit fee of $200 yeah, two hundred was it two fifty? About two fifty. Yeah, about two fifty. So and then the car was how much was it? Down? I think it came to like hundred and something dollars. Yeah, around there anyway. So we're able to we're able to get that done and we picked the car. Um initially we wanted to like get the car for the same period from yesterday being Saturday evening till Monday night. Um, but it was much it was much more expensive and we didn't have that much money at the time So we were advised to get the car um, for one day and then call in to make an extension And we would be able to pay the debit card because we had enough money on the debit card just not on the credit card So we're like, okay So we did that and they told us oh, yeah um, You could actually come in to make the payment upon returning the car and you could make the payment via your debit card and also get your um, deposit um, refunded to your account. So we're like, oh, that's awesome. That's great. We pick up the car. And um, so we're like, oh, you know, we need to um, call the car until to do the extension. So Lano does that. And they now start giving us grief about that because um, they say, oh, the auto system is down because ideally you could like just change your extension date or put in your extension date on their site. It wasn't allowing us to do that. So we had to call and even that was a process because you're talking to an automated um, representative and then after you actually get a customer service representative and even then, um, initially the first call we had, you could hardly hear the person and then the second call we had, um, the person, there was a different person who attended to us and they told us that their systems were down um, We had given the card information everything to have the payment done They're like all oh, their systems were done down and the payment that needed to be made was like $14 um, Which we had so <laughs> It was just very frustrating. We tried different methods. Nothing was working and they were like, oh um, You need to go in person because what needs to be done is that they'll have to swipe the card so we tried to do that we look up like the nearest location where we can go in to make a payment and they were closing in at the time it was like 15 minutes and the place that the nearest location was like 19 minutes away so we already knew that that was not going to happen so we had to call back go through the process by the time we were able to speak to another customer service representative who turned out to be the second person we talked to um, we were like six minutes away from the time when 
that particular branch would close so we tried to get that sorted um she was just telling us the same thing and when we asked her for information regarding like what the implications would be if we couldn't get in the car uh, before the the current um return date um yeah we tried to find out what the implications would be she was like oh i don't know i'm just like <laughs> for me honestly that irritated me because i worked in customer service uh, more so, more on the hotel reservation side and campus res reservations so i understand how the dynamic is when you're working in customer service you are given multiple resources for which um you are to at least help the customer or the client that you have you're given as many resources you are supposed to know so much about the company that you work for so there's no way that is something that should be basic you are talking to as a customer service representative you're talking to people who are looking to you for information in the event that they don't that information isn't there on the site so you can't be telling people basically or like oh i don't know that should be something you know like how much does your company charge in the event that a person isn't able to meet the extension date i would think in a car rental business that's something that is at least your most frequent question or one of them so i was a bit irritated by the lack of um what is it what's the word the lack of i don't know the willingness to check you know because also if you work for a company you should have a platform that you use to interact with other employees who work with you to find out information one of them could be microsoft teams we use microsoft teams you should be able to use something like that to interact with other employees so you should be able to ask or at least your supervisor so i didn't understand that the person I was able to call the specific branch where we picked up the car much sooner than when the the closing time today was they could have done that earlier they would have taken the initiative to say oh let me actually call to find this and this out no they didn't do it they're just giving very black information and i'm just like <laughs> how exactly how but anyway solano ended up like searching on the net how much does avis charge um or what penalties are there if you keep the car a day beyond the um um the uh, stated return date and the information was there on google how do you as a customer service representative not just look that up i've worked there you if your information isn't there you can check on the site or just look it up i've had to search for hotel information outside of where i work because a customer needs that information i wouldn't just thought oh no i don't like no do do your job like be engaged you are the first person that uh, a customer gets to talk to or interact with you are the face of your company basically so i'm just like i don't understand if you work in customer service and this is what you do to people do not work in customer service please do not because your your role and your you represent your company don't embarrass your company the place of work you know because you you don't actually enjoy your job you know yeah but anyway that's my little spew um but yeah we are back on the road so yeah guys that's it from us um, <laughs> i think i think um there's some unforeseen things that will always happen when you're making a long journey like this yeah um, i think that of course preparation is important and i think we did as much preparation as we could um even uh that earlier incident with the uh, customs uh, border patrol <laughs> like like we wouldn't have known that we needed to go through Ohio first we didn't know that we had to take specific locations in order to reach our final destination so I guess preparation is always important but there's gonna be unforeseen circumstances and that's how you gain experience like I know that when I'm returning back it's gonna be easier because I know what to expect yeah um, I know now more about rental uh, agreements because I don't rent a lot so now I understand 
how these things work and what I need to do in preparation for these things. So yeah, it's just a lot of things that are happening at once and uh, we just had to learn, you know, you learn by experience. Yeah. And as much as you can put preparation in things, you still have to learn through experience sometimes. And you know, the important thing is we're still going to our destination, we're safe. Yeah, things could have been worse, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's been it's been an important uh, lesson for us to learn what happens on these kind of journeys. So yeah, I think that's the takeaway I can I can I got from this. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, like, just keep praying. <laughs> A lot of unexpected things have happened um, already in our journey. It's been it's been a long one. Um, yeah, so a lot of unexpected things have happened by now We should have been like three hours maybe away from our destination and we are seven hours Just over seven hours away from our destination. So so much has happened so many unexpected things have happened um, But in all things, I think the thing that we are at least happy about have been consistent about is just praying all the obstacles that we faced it's just looking to god and i to an extent as much as like i have ranted about this um it's because i do know that there are a lot of people who are out here in positions where they can actually make good change and just be of help to people and they're not doing that um but at the same time you know it has it has taught me that you know what in all situations look to god because some things are just so beyond us. They just happen in ways that you would have never thought possible. And you're in a situation where you're just set back. Um, but just look to God because it helps you not be anxious. Um, we can laugh about the things that have happened today just because of that. Um, yeah, so definitely in all things, we move with God at the end of the day. Um, so regardless of whatever happens, I think I can say like on both our behalves that we're still grateful to God that we're still here. Like Lano said, it could have been worse, honestly. So yeah. Anyway, guys, yeah, let's keep moving. <laughs> okay, so we are now in New York. Um, this one was a long stretch, a long stretch, and I know for like my non-American subscribers or viewers, um, this may be surprising, but yeah, this is New York, the state. So um, this was something that surprised me too when I first got here, um, because I had the expectation that it all looked like New York City, um, but yeah, it is what it is. What's up, guys? It's in the morning now. Anyway, yeah, so we ended up just like sleeping. Well, we, we arrived in our destination state, um, but we ended up just spending the night in one of the, the townships. Yeah. So yeah, we are still on the road, but at least we are in the destination state and the final, final go, destination go, go, is close. Go. So yeah, it's been, it's been a journey. Lana was driving for a long time and yeah, we're like initially would have planned that, you know, to wake up really early and he was supposed to like start heading back to Michigan, but mm, it's too exhausting. It's been, it's been a journey. So we decided to sleep in and yeah, enjoy the beautiful day. <laughs> Hey guys, so we finally got to our final destination. Um, it's been a very long journey, um, but we made it. Um, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed every aspect of this video. Um, yeah, there's so much change going on, but I can't wait to take you guys with me on this new uh, part of my life. Um, to be quite frank with you, it has been it has been quite the move. I have been anxious during this trip. Um, about you know how things will go moving to a different state um, having to start work um, which I'm still very thankful for um, but it's just a transition I got comfortable in college and you know but it's time to grow it's time to experience new things so I'm looking forward to just growing as a person finding out more about myself um, experiencing 
um different things and just yeah like i said just growing as a person i'm looking forward to that be it personally and professionally um yeah so i'm looking forward to those different things um but yeah it's gonna be an interesting journey i think god has opened a lot of doors for me um just for me to get to this point and so i trust that he has a great plan for my life so yeah i'm excited to take you guys with me on this journey and yeah that's been it for my move i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button um like and share 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 okay bye guys my ipad doesn't know it's yeah it's trying to act cool it's trying to act uh, like a pro when it's just in here <laughs> yes <yeah. laughs> Why can't I reject it? No. <laughs>